When you look at it, Kendall and the Chicago Cubs have only lost a single game in the postseason so far. They have swept everybody except for one team. Let's see if they can walk out of here with a W today. The Twins fans are hoping they can get a W, but you know what? The way Kendall is playing, he's starting to get a little bit better. We're facing Brett Anderson though today. 2-0 in the postseason, 2.13 ERA. This dude has been laser sharp. His beard though needs a little bit of maintenance if you ask me. Looking a little scraggly there, but Kendall says, you know what? Now is the time to pick it up and lead this team to a W. Now Kendall is ready for some action in the World Series so far, two for eight. He did have a couple of fielder's choices, but no home runs, no RBIs, a couple of runs scored, a couple of stolen bases, but that's not the Kendall that we're used to seeing. Now, here in Target Field, it's a sold out stadium. Now, runner on second base, this ball is swung in. Kendall, that's that's not the Kendall King we're looking for. If we were hoping to start better today, that's uh, not the exact way we were hoping to start. Okay, first at bat doesn't matter. Well, screw the first at bat. That was just the World Series nerves getting to him. He's in a new ballpark, not used to playing here in Minnesota. It's a little chilly, to be perfectly honest with you, but look at the Twins. They actually have a 3-1 lead here. We do have two runners on and only one out. Now, the Beard Man is going to throw one in. This one is there, and Kendall pops it to deep right field. I don't think that one's going to have enough juice on it. No, not even close. I mean, that's like... 150 feet away from the fence. Kendall, what is what is happening to you, my friend? Now, Kendall at the plate has definitely been a disappointment today, but there's still opportunity to pick things up. But in the bottom of the third inning, there's two outs, and they have multiple runners on base at the moment. The Twins are going to smack one deep in the hole. Kendall's going to field it all the way in the grass. Can he throw this guy out? It's going to be close. Oh, no. It's too high. They said he's out, though. What a play. Kendall will take that one. I thought he was going to be safe, but he ends up being out. I'm not going to lie. I'm perfectly happy that they didn't actually challenge that play because I feel like that dude would have been safe, but we'll take it for the moment. Now, 4-3. We've actually scored a couple of runs now. This ball's going to be hit over here to Kendall again. He's got a chance to throw him out at first. The last one was a little too high. This one a little too wide, but still much better on target, and we get the out at first nonetheless. Okay, Kendall, look. This has been a horrible day. You hit one about three feet. You hit another one about 30 feet. Let's do better here, please. Knock all the dirt off your cleats. Get your footing right. Let's knock this one out. So here in the top of the fifth inning, we're still facing a lefty who, again, we struggle a little bit against lefty sometimes. So the first pitch is in. This one is low, and it's right to the first baseman. Almost a double play if that dude's head wasn't on a swivel. What is happening to Kendall King? Now, bottom of the sixth inning, it's still a 4-3 lead for Minnesota, but we're coming back a little bit. We're starting to get a couple of runs. We're starting to get our bearings about us. Let's see if we can make sure they don't score any more runs here. Now, another chopper to Kendall. Feels that one cleanly. Looks like a routine play at first base, and it is going to be a routine play as Kendall gets another assist to get another out this inning. Okay, Kendall, seriously, let's talk about this really quick. This has been not your best performance. I mean, you've struggled so far in the World Series, but this is literally the struggle bus. If you are the captain of the struggle bus, you own the struggle bus company. Do something here. There's a new pitcher in the ballgame, though. He almost threw our friend down at first base. Pick things up and be much better here in this at bat because you got a runner on first, there's one out, and your team is down. Now, Kendall's waiting on the first pitch. This one's going to be, ooh, just low in the strike zone to get an actual strike on Kendall. Kendall has found his way into a 3-1 count now after that early strike. He wants to step up and contend for his team. This one is going to be low, so Kendall says, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take that base on balls, move my way over to first base, and not actually pop out, ground out, or line out on this one. So Anthony Rizzo, who has had his fair share of struggles today, he's 0 for 3 in the ballgame with the fly out in his most recent at bat, but he has two runners on here in the top of the first, or here in the top of the seventh with only one out, and he hits a dribbler, reminiscent of what Kendall did earlier. The runners move over to third and second base, but there's now going to be two outs for Cole Scruggs. And Cole Scruggs on the day is actually 0 for 3, but he has a chance to get walked, and they are going to walk him, so it's going to be an intentional walk. Cole Scruggs is going to slide over to first base, and bases are now loaded. All right, Starling Castro, you had a solo home run in the fourth inning. I'm a little shocked they're actually going to decide to pitch to you and walk Cole Scruggs when he was 0 for 3, but you have two strikes, there are two outs. A grand slam would be incredible right here. So the ball's in, and the young fella struck out with bases loaded. Wow. Kendall's got a chance here to be clutch. He has been pretty horrible so far in the ball game, but with two outs, he has runners in the corners. What can you do, Kendall? You uh, you can swing and miss. Okay, okay. If you follow Kendall's career, he typically does better against right-handers, and we finally have a right-handed pitcher in today's ball game. This one is split out to right field. It's going deep. It's going back. This one is going to be foul. Okay, got to protect the plate now. It's a one-two count. There's two outs. There's runners on the corners. Look for something. It's a curveball, and Kendall smacks it into the gap. Thank you, Kendall. Finally, we get something to happen positive here. Kendall's going to take a stand-up double. He's going to move in here. He's going to chill. The runner's going to go home. It's going to be a play at the plate. There is not going to be a play at the plate. He slides in. It's a two-RBI gap shot for Kendall King. Look at him. He's saying, wait, that was me? That was me to hit that shot? 
Yes, Kendall, you finally had a good play. The curveball there, you split it over the second baseman's head, and you get two runs on there to get a nice double to put your team in the lead. Now, here comes Anthony Rizzo. Kendall has now put his team with a 6-5 to five lead in the top of the eighth inning. Now, a left-handed batter. He's going to go in. He's going to try to actually bunt. Look at Rizzo laying down the bunt. Could he actually be safe? It's going to be close. They say that Rizzo is thrown out, y'all. I'm not going to lie. The dude with the, the mustache, a catcher, pretty good. But Rizzo almost got that bunt to work. Now, here we go in the bottom of the ninth inning. A 6-5 to five lead right now. The Minnesota Twins are kind of nervous. The ball's going to be in from the sidearm pitcher. Kendall's got a chance to get this one. He's going to lay out fully. Look at this. The gold glove level play. Can he get it over to first? We're going to take our time. He throws it. And that one is going to be just in time. The diving catch. The assist. And we threw out what could have been the tying run of today's ballgame. Look at it again. Kendall lays completely out. Look at the show track showing him. Distance covered four feet. Really? You go to show us the distance covered at four feet. But look at this. The turn. The throw. Arm strength of 88 miles an hour while sitting down. That's a gold glove play if you ask me. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to seal the ball game. So Kendall kind of struggled earlier in the ball game, but came through when it mattered the most. Got the two RBI shot to right center field. Had an incredible gold glove level play to seal the deal for his team as we walk out of here with a 3-0 lead and a chance to close this ball game out in the very next game. It all comes down to this. A 3-0 lead. We're here in Target Field. Some people are calling the Chicago Cubs the Golden State Warriors of Major League Baseball. You know what? Kendall just might be Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, and LeBron James wrapped up all into one player. Look at this dude. Look at how perfect the beard is. The mustache man literally has no chance. I think that's their catcher. Now, today we're facing Brian Kalita. This dude has literally no runs, no losses in the postseason, but a 1.29 ERA in seven innings pitched is pretty good. Not a lot of strikeouts, not a lot of walks. Let's see if we can capitalize, though, on this guy's performance today. Now, one thing there's been a lot of chatter about so far is that Kendall switched bats in the postseason in the World Series. And he's 3 for 12 in the World Series since he switched bats. So maybe this bat hasn't been the kindest to him. Maybe he should go back to his other one. Kendall seems to say if he loses today, there's a chance he's going to switch back to his old one. But a runner on first base, one out. This first ball is drilled out the right field, but it's going to be like significantly foul. I mean, like as foul as you can possibly hit it. Now one strike, still a runner on first base. Kendall's waiting for the next one. Felita is going to throw it in. It's going to be a curveball that Kendall smacks in the hole of the shortstop. A throwing run over there in this one. Wow, Kendall says he's safe. He can't believe it. They're going to say he's actually out, and there's going to be no challenge on that play. So the Cubs, somehow, even though Kendall was out in the first inning, end up having a 2-0 lead here in the bottom of the second inning. One runner on and one out. This ball's going to be smacked in over to the first baseman. A nice stop. Kendall's going to get it. It's a little wide. He's going to try to turn back to Rizzo, and he gets the double play. What a play so far by the Cubs in the field. The pitchers, you know, he's pretty happy with how we're playing right now. All right, Kendall, you have the ground out in the first inning. This bat has not been kind to you. you got to switch it up. Look, Kendall, if the Cubs don't win today or even going into next season, you have to get rid of this bat. Burn it. Set it on fire. Whatever you need to do, get rid of this bat ASAP unless you can knock one out. The first pitch is going to be an outside four-seam fastball from Felita or Kalita. Sitting with one ball and no strikes and one out. Nobody on. This one is, wow, right past the third baseman. Does he have a hole in his glove? How did he not get that? Kendall might have been able to stretch that one into a double, but he stays at first base because, you know what, we want a stolen base right here. Now, here comes Anthony Rizzo. His first at bat was a walk and then a stolen base. Anthony Rizzo got a stolen base? Really? Anthony Rizzo's out here showing the wheels today. Kind of impressed by that, Anthony Rizzo. So Kalita's ready to go for a slide step, it looks like. Kendall says, I don't care about your slide step. I'm still taking second base. Rizzo's going to strike here. Kendall's going to get the second base tag. No easy. The second base steal. Pretty easy. Can't even get him on the tag. And Rizzo, of course, strikes out. All right, Kendall. One for two on the day. You got that single. This at bat has literally had no power for you. Like, there's no pop in this bat whatsoever. We need you to get some corks in that bat, some steroids, some HGH, whatever you need. Because this is the World Series. We need this ring. Now here in the top of the fifth inning, it's a right-handed pitcher. Runners on first and second base. It's only a 2-1 lead at the moment, though. The ball's going to come in. Kendall says, you know what? I'm using showtime right here. Kendall is going to pop this one out to probably deep center field. Oh, this is going to be off the wall. Kendall, run. Run, young fella. You got a chance at a triple. Never mind. Our fortunes have changed. Almost a home run. That is going to be a bases clearing triple for Kendall. All the runners are going to score to make it a two-RBI shot to extend our lead from 2-1 to one to 4-1. to one. I honestly thought that that ball was going to be a pop out for Kendall, but it ended up working out for us. So here, top of the fifth inning, a 4-1 lead. Rizzo's up. Rizzo's going to swing, and this ball's going to go to the shortstop. Kendall, you know what? You probably should have won, but actually, he caught that. Never, I thought that was a ground out, but he caught that. Rizzo can't believe it. I can't believe it either. All right, Cole Scruggs is up now. Three balls, no strikes. He's got a chance to get walked, or he could get a base hit and knock me in. We'll see which one he chooses to do. 
They're actually going to walk him, so uh, Cole Scruggs, welcome to first base. Runners on first and third now. Starling Castro. Yeah, if you remember Starling Castro, he had bases loaded and he kind of struck out, which was embarrassing. But he's got runners in the corners now. This ball's going to go in. Oh, we should have went. Kendall, why did you? Nope, nope. Kendall, go back. Go back. You don't want to go. If you would have ran right when he threw that, Kendall, instead of sliding back to the third base, you would have been okay. We could have had a double steal and then got another run, but you kind of choked. All right, so now we have runners on second and third. One strike on Starling Castro with two outs. What are you going to do, Mr. Castro? Uh, he's going to punch one over to the third baseman, and that's going to end the inning. Oh, this is thrown. That was almost thrown a little bit too high, but they get the out, and still it's going to end the inning with a 4-1 lead for us. Now, moving on to the bottom of the sixth inning, nobody out, one runner on, and Sam Millar is up to bat. Our pitcher is dealing so far. Only one run given up at the moment. And this ball smacked over. Kendall's going to try to get the easy double play. He flips it. Yo, Kendall, that was quite possibly the latest double play attempt that I've ever seen in my entire life. Do better, big fella. But oh no, Nick Franklin is injured. Kendall threw it a little bit late to second base. He actually might have got his teammate injured. They're going to remove him from the game. That's not good because if we don't win today, Nick Franklin could be out for multiple games. So here comes Kendall, fresh off of getting his teammate injured. He's trying to look past it. He's got a triple, he's got a single today, and a couple of RBIs to show for it. Much better in today's ballgame. One more RBI could seal up the World Series MVP for his team and a World Series victory, more importantly. And the first pitch, inside, whoa, are they sending a message to Kendall? That was a little too close, and what, did he just mouth something to Kendall? That's, uh, Kendall's not too happy about that one. Now, Kendall obviously missed on that power swing earlier, but now he's worked his way into a 2-1 count. Still that runner's on first base with only one out. Kendall, oh, that's deep. That's back. Can that be out of here? It's going to be close. Yo, it's gone. Kendall rips one off of the foul pole, a no-doubt home run. They say no-doubt home run, but to me, if you ask me... There was a little doubt on that one, right? Like, Kendall was a little nervous. He tried to wave that one fair, but he gets the home run to give him two RBIs in today's ballgame. That, for all intents and purposes, should hopefully seal the World Series victory for him and maybe the World Series MVP. But it's a two-run home run, 342 feet on that one. What a play by Kendall King to lead his team, hopefully, to a victory. Again, look at this pitch. It's high. It's a little bit outside. Kendall's ready for it. Cranks on that one with a nasty swing, grills the pitcher, and then says, you know what, is it a home run? Is it a home run? And he goes right off of the foul pole to seal that deal. Now, the Twins aren't dead yet. Look, we thought we might walk out here with an easy W, but in the bottom, in the bottom of the seventh inning, it's only a 6-4 ball game. And this ball's going to be smacked over here to Kendall. He's going to field it clean. This guy's got decent speed at a 60. Oh, Kendall, that might be off target. That is off target. Kendall King, what are you doing? That might have been an error for you. We just gave the Twins a little bit of a lifeline. Now, Kendall's back up. The home run, the triple, the single. He is a double away from getting the cycle in the World Series. How incredible would it be to get the cycle in the World Series in the top of the ninth inning? you got a runner on first base. We are facing a lefty. There is one out. Kendall can seal this game. The first pitch is in. Kendall's going to hit it. It's on his hands. Though. I feel like that's going to be a shallow fly ball, and of course it is. The center fielder is going to get that one. No chance at a cycle, unfortunately, unless the Twins somehow, you know, tie this ball game up. And moving on to the bottom of the ninth, look at the Cubs actually getting some more runs. So it's 8-4, to four, bottom of the ninth inning. The Twins are trying to get a rally here with one out, though. This ball's going to be hit over here to the second baseman. It's the new second baseman because Franklin's not in. We're going to try and get this ball over. They say he's safe. We could have had the double play to seal this game, but instead we get the force out at second. Oh, Nick Franklin's back in. What a tough guy. This guy's actually back in, but we are going to walk out of here with the W. Ladies and gentlemen, Kendall King is a World Series champion yet again in his career. And if you ask me, he started off kind of slow in the World Series, but here in the last game, he got the home run that he needed. He got the triple. He got a single. He had like, what, four or five RBIs. This dude put the team on his back to make sure that they got the World Series championship, and they're actually going to celebrate it on their opponent's team. We can't wait for the Chicago Cubs City Parade. That will be an incredible feat to have it, but look at how happy everybody is. So ladies and gentlemen, your 2023 World Series champions, Kendall King is right there front and center. He should be holding the trophy if you ask me. Will be the Chicago Cubs as they're going to walk out of there with a 4-0 sweep of the Minnesota Twins in the World Series. And in case you guys are wondering, we're going to take a quick look at the overall achievements for Kendall and the rest of his team. The postseason MVP was Kendall King. Look at this, 426 batting average, 7 home runs, 20 RBIs. In the American League, it was Brooks and Man, obviously, who played for the Minnesota Twins. But when we look at this, let's see if Kendall can actually win the World Series MVP. And the answer to that is actually no. Look at this. Andres Rodriguez ended up getting the World Series MVP. He had a higher batting average than Kendall, but Kendall had the same amount of home runs, I believe. He had more RBIs, especially in that last game, 
and they gave it to Andres Rodriguez. I feel like Kendall got robbed, but regardless, they walked out of there with a W and they won the World Series.